hello and welcome uh, folks uh, we are going to do a short video on phrasal verbs now phrasal verbs the first moment you hear the title you do recognize the two words phrase and verb and you have the meaning of what a phrasal verb is of course there is the second part which is the verb so you know what a verb is that which requires an action but phrase phrasal right so a verb which has or which becomes a phrase when does a word become a phrase when it has more than one word if it is a one word we just call it word but then when we put together uh, semantically correct words to the front or the back or more than one words to the front or the back we call them as phrases so a phrasal verb is something which is more than one word which makes itself into a phrasal verb let us uh, look at an example to begin with so that we understand what a phrasal verb is and what are the basic things necessary to understand a phrasal verb look at this first example uh, it is necessary uh, in a phrasal verb exercise to know what is a subject object and an uh, phrasal verb right so a phrasal verb always comes in two parts you could always recognize it by uh, your verb for being followed by a uh, another word you know which comes as a phrase in this example you do see that the phrasal verb has been highlighted in an orange color right so please look at the sentence i finally broke into the second package of cookies i finally broke into the second package right could be the you know uh, the sentence which gives you an idea of what is happening or the what kind of statement a person is trying to make i is the subject right and then you have the object is which second package of cookies right so you have the subject i who's opening or broke into the second package of cookies which is the object so now you know that at least in this sentence uh, you have a subject and an object so this is necessary to move on forward in this uh, lesson of or in a short video of what a phrasal verb is now let us move on to the next slide look at this i have given you a simple equation now a phrasal verb has uh, four types we are looking at two types at a time so that you know we are clubbing uh, what, whatever uh, form of verb phrasal verb which could make better sense to us so the first set is transitive phrasal verb and intransitive phrasal verb now a transitive phrasal verb or an intransitive phrasal verb both of them do have a subject and an object in the with the phrasal verb in the middle but then the only difference is that a, a transitive phrasal verb is a phrasal verb which is dependent on an object just remember for the time being because later in the second part of the video we are going to look at many examples so they you know uh, remind yourself of this phrase called uh, dependent on the object so anything or no not anything the phrasal verb which is dependent on an object is called a transitive phrasal verb so what is the uh, opposite of it which is the intransitive phrasal verb and what is the opposite of dependent on object independent of the object right so a phrasal verb which is independent of a phrasal verb is called as an intransitive phrasal verb for the time being transitive phrasal verb means dependent on object intransitive phrasal verb means independent of object you could just remember that easy right now we'll move on to the second part of or the second category of what we are trying to look at here now we have a uh, separable uh, phrasal verbs and non separable phrasal verbs right now in a separable phrasal verbs uh, there is a unique condition where the phrasal verb like i told you has at least two words one of the words would be a verb right so that is what the phrase makes it's a phrasal verb right so in a separable phrase verb even if you cut into the middle of the phrasal verb 
and then use the object in the middle of it it would still make sense to us but then in a non separable phrasal verb if you cut it in the cut the phrasal verb in the middle and then substitute the object it will not make meaning right so uh, you know the verb and the proposition is non separable that is the understanding we do have right you could uh, you know uh, separate it that makes it the separable phrase verb and then if you cannot separate it it becomes a non separable phrasal verb now the thing you should focus on here is that these are only theoretical in nature and if i build on more on to it it is only going to give you more confusion but then we are going to look at some of examples from our own textbook which i'll be sharing it with uh, sharing with you a little later if you look at these examples we are going to uh, practice and practice will make permanence of this idea of phrasal verbs so you could see our textbook here our textbook is going to come in very handy and it gives you a very short introduction of uh, phrasal verbs so you could very well see uh, in your screens that a phrasal verb is nothing but a combination of the main verb and a particle right so you know what a main verb is and you know what a particle is and this particle could uh, sometimes be a preposition or an adverb and the other uh, types right you know the, the we have clubbed uh, the phrasal verbs into uh, two uh, categories of you know uh, each having two types in each of it we have looked at it so let us move on to look at uh, these types with examples you could see that in your screens uh, that there are three examples for a transitive verb now i did tell you that transitive verb uh, the phrasal verb is dependent on the object now if you look at uh, the second and the third example uh, you would know that uh, the phrasal verb uh, can be identified in the middle uh, part of the sentence turn down turn down is the phrasal verb here now uh, you do know that Uh, there is an object right now the object is the gas right please turn down when you just say please turn down the one who is receiving the statement that is being told to him will not have a response turn down what so uh, the speaker has to give an uh, you know extra information on what is that has to be turned down right so in this case uh, the phrasal verb called turn down will feel incomplete right you know not just the phrasal verb the whole sentence is incomplete uh, without the object the gas so only when you say please turn down the gas it makes meaning to us without the object a phrasal verb will become an intransitive phrasal verb so only when uh, you know there is an object and if you know to be very frank uh if when a phrasal verb is dependent like the sentence we have used uh, you know in the first part of the video when a transitive verb becomes a transitive phrasal verb when it is dependent on the object so when it is independent of an object it becomes an intransitive phrasal verb we can also look at uh, sentence examples like this look at the three examples here my car broke down robert stayed back the thief ran away you could very well or easily recognize the phrasal verbs in these three sentences broke down stayed back ran away these three are the phrasal verbs used in these three sentences now with these three sentences you do not need an object it is very much evident from the example itself my car broke down because the phrasal verb is referring to the car robert stayed back stayed back the phrasal verb is referring to the subject robert the thief ran away the phrasal verb ran away is referring to the subject the thief which makes these kind of phrasal verbs as intransitive phrasal verbs moving on we will also look at separable phrase verbs separable phrase verbs like i told you can be separated when there is a noun Uh, when there is a noun or pronoun as the object right so whenever there is a noun or pronoun uh, as the object you can separate the phrasal verb 
let me give you an, a simple example but then uh, you know these uh, phrasal verbs especially separable phrasal verbs commonly occur with these uh, participles like up down in out on off away back and over let us look at the first example the management had called up had to call up the parents this is the sentence right so the sentence with the separable uh, phrasal verb and without the separable phrasal verb uh, can be uh, given here uh, meaning the first sentence before the backslash also makes meaning to you the sentence after the backslash also makes meaning to you so it is to demonstrate to you that a phrasal verb can be separated in the middle for example uh, let us come back to the same sentence the management had to call up the parents now where is the phrasal verb here exactly call up is the phrasal verb look at the same sentence uh, which is after the backslash the management had to call the parents up you do see that the first sentence the object is the parents the management is the subject the parents is the object call up is the phrasal verb and both of these things are put together the subject and the object are being put together by the phrasal verb but then what unique property a phrasal verb has is that you could split the phrasal verb call up in the second sentence which is after the backslash you could see that call is separated by the object the object had obviously come into the middle now when it comes into the middle the phrasal verb uh, you know uh, is being broken right you know and you the still and still the uh, the sentence makes meanings to meaning to us you could see that in both sentences let me read that once again to you the management had to call up the parents makes meaning to us the management had to call the parents up makes meaning to us it is perfectly all right to write a sentence like this you also need to uh, remind yourself that a uh, phrasal verbs are generally used in spoken language than in written language only uh, because uh, phrasal verbs are generally considered uh, by the native speakers as something that which is very uh, colloquial right so we don't see uh, much of it but then uh, it is not a formal way of uh, writing or uh, a forming a sentence that is uh, writing is more formal than the speech right so you see these examples in uh, spoken english rather than written english look at the second example the chief guest had to give away the prizes you are right the phrasal verb is give away now the subject is the chief guest the prizes is uh, the object uh, and uh, give away is the phrasal verb now uh, like the second part of the sentence you could split the phrasal verb give and away and then make uh, you know the object come to the center of the phrasal verb and then make a sentence like this the chief guest had to give the prizes away look at the third example jack was advised to put away the mobile jack was advised to put the mobile away both of them make perfect meaning to us in the same uh, uh, you know fervor we also let us also look at non separable phrase verbs now in a non separable phrasal verbs however you try to separate a phrasal verb it will not allow uh, the separation of the phrasal verb and there are no variations here right you know it makes the word order uh, you know complicated right so uh, look at this the caterpillar turns into a butterfly now you do know that the phrasal verb here is turns into can you make a sentence like this the caterpillar turns a butterfly into no it is uh, wrong right you know it only makes uh, the sentence much more complicated to understand look at the second example he came across a group of children dancing on the road came across here is the uh, phrasal verb here right he came a group of children across dancing on the road do you think this makes meaning to us no it doesn't because he is the subject here a group of children is the object here do you think if you put a group of children in the middle of came and across it would make meaning to us no it doesn't in the same uh, fervor let us look at the third example also i am looking forward to the vacation with my family now uh, the phrasal verb here is looking forward i am looking my family forward to the vacation with it definitely does not 
make any sense to us or i am looking the vacation forward to my family again once again you know if you uh, substitute the uh, you know uh, the pronoun here it does not mean uh, make once again meaning to us and that is one of the uniqueness of uh, you know a phrasal verb so you have only four types the transitive phrasal verb intransitive phrasal verbs uh, separable phrasal verbs and non separable phrasal verbs thank you for watching